I'm Scott Allen Miller, and three years ago, my family sold everything to move from Dallas, Texas to Nicaragua. For a lot of my audience, the story of our move from Texas to Nicaragua is one that they know well. But for a lot of you who are newcomers or those who are just discovering the channel, this is a story you may not know, and it's worth establishing some context for the channel here. Three years ago, we were living in the United States, but the story goes back longer than that. We really began looking abroad for a place to live for our family in 2012, so 12 years ago at this point. At that time, our children were young. Our youngest was just one year old, and my wife and I decided to take them on the grand tour of Europe. Two months going all over Europe, looking for the place that we were most likely to want to live abroad. We had long decided that we wanted to raise our children overseas, give them a broader scope and experience in the world, because we had grown up ourselves in the United States, and we brought a lot of American context with us, and we would bring that wherever we went. Our kids would, ne would automatically learn English and get an American American cultural experience because my wife and I were both American, so we knew we had that. That's something that we intrinsically would take with us. But we wanted them to grow up in different places around the world, whether it was getting exposure to another language or a different culture or just any number of things. We wanted them to have a broader scope than we ever had. And this is something we were very dedicated to providing to them from the very earliest ages. And my wife and I have been talking about living abroad since many years before we even had children. It was something we were always, always interested in but we didn't make a concerted effort to make it happen. In 2012, we spent two months in Europe looking for the place that would be perfect for us to at least start this adventure. And we had a really good experience all throughout Western Europe, going to countries like the UK, Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Austria, Switzerland, and we got a really good idea of which places we really liked and which ones we just liked a little bit. We really didn't find any that we didn't like, but we definitely found some areas that spoke to us a lot. And in many cases, we found places that we never thought would be of interest or just perfect for us, or we felt probably would be. We took a number of years after having gone to Europe to explore the world, and finally, after moving around a few different times in the United States, doing some things to position my job so that we'd be in a position where we could consider moving overseas and excuse the parrot who decides that any time I'm doing a show is the exact time he wants to get involved. He loves the excitement in my voice and that's just part of living in Nicaragua. You know we're really here because we have a Nicaraguan green parrot. And so after a couple years of setting things up, by 2015 we were able to move abroad and we started our adventure by moving to Spain. But we didn't sell everything that we had in the United States. We did, however, get a storage unit. We got very lucky. My father provided us with a storage unit. I grew up on a farm. He had extra space in the barn. He built a storage unit, beautiful unit, really big in the barn. We were able to put all of our furniture, all of our worldly possessions into that with enough space to move around so we could use it kind of like a store. Anytime we were home from Europe, we could go shopping in the storage unit at my father's place and we could find winter clothes, summer clothes, toys that the kids hadn't had for a while, books that we were looking for, anything we needed, we had in storage. It was very handy. So we didn't get rid of everything, but we did move out of our house and we did make ourselves much more mobile. We didn't have a home in the United States. We just had a storage unit where our stuff could belong so that we had a way to get to it. We didn't have to unload it all, but we did have to move it. And we had to move it from partially from Texas and partially from New York City to my father's place near Buffalo, New York, for those who know the area in the Great Lakes. Over the course of the next several years, we lived all over Europe, mostly in the Mediterranean or in Far Eastern Europe, as well as a little bit in Latin America. During that time, we did spend a few months living in Nicaragua, and it was a great experience. However, it was in the city of Granada, and it was quite some time ago. Nicaragua was a different place back then, and Granada is a very different place than Leon, where we live today. But that experience gave us a lot of insight into Nicaragua and gave us a launching pad where we were able to explore the country back in 2015. We went to nearly all the major cities, Matagalpa, Hinotega, Chinandega, Leon. We didn't go to Managua, which is really surprising. We did do San Juan del Sur, but only a tiny bit. We did do Ometepe, but not extensively. We hit Rivas, but only briefly. There's a lot of places we didn't go, but we did go to quite a few, enough that a lot of people uh, said to us, you know, you, you've been to more places than most Nicaraguans have back in 2015. So we had a decent scope of the country, but there was a lot that we wish we would have had more time to do, and life events didn't allow us to stay in Nicaragua as long as we had hoped at the time. And then, of course, we moved on to Europe again after after having been in Nicaragua. So we thought, eh, someday we may come back or probably come back to the region 
but it didn't at the time occur to us that Nicaragua was probably the place that we wanted to move to. Fast forward four years, I was helping a friend look for a place where he could retire, and we thought after years of research together uh, that very likely southern Nicaragua was going to be where he wanted to be. So I came down with him and some friends in 2019, and we went uh, searching for the right community or a discovery process to see if San Juan del Sur specifically would be a great place for him to retire someday. And he was interested in possibly investing in a home early so that he would have a place he could vacation in and then retire when he was ready. And a lot of people have that idea, and that's a great process. So that's something we see a lot of. Being back in Nicaragua was really important for me. It gave me a chance to see how the country had developed over four more years, and it gave me a bit of exposure to a part of the country where I had only spent a couple days previously. So I got to know San Juan del Sur and its immediate surrounds a bit more, and we had a chance to go back to Granada and see where I used to live, and even ran into some of my friends from when we had been there before. It was a really great experience, and it got me thinking. When I returned home to Texas, I talked to my wife and said, you know, we really should think about moving our home base. So we had intended to not return to Texas when we left in 2012. We actually had moved, or in 2013, we had really moved away in 2013 and made our base in New York. And then when we moved to Europe in 2015, we had given up that base. We had no intention to move back to the United States at all, let alone Texas. So when we had ended up in Texas after a chain of events, after having lived in Europe for a while, it was never really by design. And we kind of fell into it. But there was a feeling that having a home base in the United States was important until we found a definite, completely certain forever home abroad. That was our goal. We were definitely aligned that that is what we wanted to find. But what we weren't sure of was where we wanted to be based in the interim. While we had been in Europe for a long time, we had done so without a home base. We would live in a country and then move on to the next one and take everything with us, leaving nothing behind. So we didn't have a base in the United States other than the storage unit that I mentioned. We didn't have any home to come back to. We didn't have any stability. When we were back in the States to visit, we would just be wherever I needed to work temporarily, or we would stay with family wherever they were. And of course, we wanted to visit family. So that made sense. But we didn't have a place of our own for a large number of years. When we ended up with our own place, it was an accident, and we got stuck there during COVID at the end of 2019. That had not happened yet, but it was about to happen. When I got back, I said, you know, we should think about making our home base, because at that point, we kind of felt like we needed one somewhere because we had lost the storage unit. We didn't have that anymore, and uh, that so we had moved into the house with all of our stuff. If we were to have a home base. It should be someplace that is physically close to our family, so it's still easy to visit, but it should be low cost. And I think having been back, Nicaragua may check those boxes. We loved it when we lived there before. It's only gotten better since we were there over the intervening four years. And there's a lot of the country we haven't explored. And I think there's a lot we're really going to like. Granada didn't check all of our boxes. We liked it. It was a nice city and it's a great place to visit. But neither of us really felt connected to the place. Neither of us felt like it was a place that was going to be our forever home in any way. We could rule it out, but we couldn't rule out Nicaragua. We just ruled out Granada. Having spent that time in San Juan del Sur, I had a much broader scope of what Nicaragua could be like, and I felt really confident that we could find something that would make Nicaragua really great for us. So we talked about it, but it took a little while for my wife to come around to the idea that we could give up our home in the United States, shift everything that we had to Nicaragua, and make that our home base. And of course, our goal is and was to keep exploring the world and be world travelers and raise our kids all over. But instead of returning to the United States, storing our things in the United States, keeping our pets and having our, our family life in the United States, that we would have it somewhere else. The argument that she had, and this makes a lot of sense, is she didn't want to make the move abroad to anywhere until she had been to enough places that she could determine decisively which place she wanted to be in the most. That sounds great, and I think a lot of people have that desire. If you can't find perfect, you're not willing to make the change. But as in, in business, that's not generally a good business decision process. You do want to not hop around from thing to thing as quickly as you can just because you find something that looks interesting, so you have to temper this. But in general, if you find something that you can say is with quite a high degree of certainty, an improvement over what you have today, you want to make that improvement, not hold on to something worse in the hopes that you can find perfect. There's a really good chance you'll never find perfect, and you don't want to skip improvement along the path. You want to keep improving nearly always uh, and only go for perfect when you have the opportunity. It is the thing that we often say that idealism is the enemy of improvement. People look for the ideal situation and certainly you should look for ideal, 
but in failing to find it often it is used as an excuse to do something that is much worse than what is right in front of you and that's where we were we had an opportunity to move to a place that we were going to love much more that was going to be a lower cost of living healthier lifestyle and give us almost everything that we wanted for our kids and maybe Nicaragua wasn't the absolute perfect place if we could choose every possible checkbox to look for. But we didn't know it wasn't. That was important. And we also had to realize that there may be no place that has every checkbox. It's almost always going to be compromises. One of the countries that we love a lot is Spain. And we can rule out a lot of the world because Spain for us completely beats it. But it has some big differences with Nicaragua. Notably, Nicaragua has a lower cost of living, although not dramatically so. It has a higher safety than Nicaragua, but not dramatically so. But Nicaragua is way closer to our family. It is so much quicker, easier, and cheaper for us to go visit family or family and friends to come visit us than it would be if we lived in Spain. From Spain, we do have the opportunity to easily explore lots of Europe. That is a huge plus for Spain. But from Nicaragua, we have an easy access to explore a lot of Latin America, which for me at least is a slight winner. We already lived in Europe and have a pretty broad scope of it. We love it, but we have lived very little in Latin America at the time that we moved. And exploring more of Latin America is more of a priority for me and I think for the kids and in general, a more important overall picture of where we probably want to be in the future is somewhere in Latin America, not in Europe. Europe is wonderful and I love it everywhere. I love all different parts of Europe and I love the variety that comes in a very small area. Europe is very special in just how much variety in language, culture, food, music, everything happens in a very safe, connected, localized area. Nowhere else in the world really gives you anything like that on that scale. So Europe is amazing and unique. But Latin America is amazing and unique in other ways and it's much more wild and untamed and unpredictable and just varied over a large space but an easily accessible one compared to Europe. And I have found over the years that I gravitate more towards Latin America than Europe. So being in Nicaragua, even if Nicaragua doesn't end up being our long-term desired home, which we think it is, but if it didn't, we're still very close to and getting better at learning what we like in the Latin American region. For example, having lived in this region and being able to explore Latin America much more easily from Nicaragua, we have discovered something we would never have guessed, which is that our second choice country, at least at this point, is Guatemala. This is not a country I anticipated finding was going to be a place that we really loved, and we do prefer Nicaragua. But if we didn't have Nicaragua as an option, Guatemala is our second choice. That is not something I would have predicted. And so having learned that, we're already seeing that we're learning more about what we like here in Latin America by being here than being in Europe than we anticipated. So that has worked out really well. So at the beginning of COVID, we made the decision that Nicaragua was going to be our new home base. Whether or not it was perfect, we made the decision it was going to be where we were going to base from and we could still continue to explore the world and make further refinements to our decision. If we discovered a new place like Guatemala and decided that it was going to be better than Nicaragua for us, we could move on to there. We made no strict commitment. It isn't like we called up Nicaragua and said, hey, we want to move there. We promise we'll never look at another country and we will stay there forever. Moving to a new country is not like a marriage. You are not making some contractual commitment or even an ethical commitment to stay in one place. You're simply saying this is where I want to be for now and they make the commitment that they're okay having you for now. When you're ready to move on or they're done with you, there is an opportunity to move on from either side. Generally, it's you that moves on, but in many cases, it's people fail to get residency and have to move on for other reasons. But the idea that you are completely tied to a country for the rest of your life because you made a single decision to go to one isn't a real thing. And you can see this because you start in a country. Wherever you're born, you already have. Your parents made that decision for you. Maybe their parents made it for them and their parents made it for them. Maybe no one's making a real conscious decision to stay there. But when your parents had you in whatever country you're from, then that decision that that was your base country was already made. And the idea that you're moving on to the next country is you making a conscious decision to change countries. And there's nothing stopping you from doing it again. There's a lot of emotional baggage that tends to come with moving to a country you think you're making a really big commitment. And you're certainly making a bigger commitment than deciding on what you're having for dinner, but you're not making an absolute permanent decision. And a lot of people move to a country with the intent of just moving on, whether in three months or in 10 years, they want to move and see lots of different places. And so they move to a country that they think 
seems interesting and they stay as long as they think it's good. Right? You may stay for a few months and say, well, you know, I got bored or some other place was calling my name. Or you may find that you get to a place and say, I thought I was just staying a few days and I just never left. We see a lot of that here in Nicaragua. So at the time in 2019, late 2019, early 2020, we made the decision that, well, for better or for worse, we were going to move to Nicaragua, call that our home base and start from there. And if we found some other place we wanted to move on to, then we could. And if we decided we wanted to stay, well, we knew it was a place we were going to like. We knew it was safe and affordable, not too far from family and it just made everything in our lives better compared to where we had lived in the United States. So it was a really wise logical decision that checked both the logical and the emotional marks at that time. Unfortunately we got stuck in the United States for a, quite a bit of time because of the COVID pandemic as many people did. Many people got stuck in Nicaragua during the pandemic as they were traveling through. So everyone has a story of where they were trapped during the pandemic. But for us it gave us about a year in which we were able to look really heavily from abroad at houses and neighborhoods neighborhoods and towns and learn as much as we could about Nicaragua. Of course, having already lived here and visited again, we were able to take information like maps and photos and, you know, uh, information online and put it together in a much more meaningful way. Trying to do that without having ever been to a country can be very difficult. But once you know a country and have a pretty good lay of the land, taking what additional information you're able to get and putting it into that context isn't nearly as hard. So we had a lot of tools at our disposal to make some pretty good educated informational guesses about what we wanted to do in Nicaragua and what prices were reasonable and what things should look like and how to interact with things. And we had resources here on the ground that they were able to help us a lot as well. So we had a really good advantage during the COVID years. So we were able to uh, very much research and, and investigate and talk about what it is we wanted, what we didn't want, where we wanted to be, what we thought of different things, talk about options and run through different scenarios. So we put in a bit of effort because we had to. It would have been far better to have simply packed up, come down a year earlier, uh, right at the end of 2019 when we first knew this is what we wanted to do, rented a place and did a bunch of investigating on the ground on foot. But we didn't have that option, so we worked with what we had. But I recommend to you guys, every time someone tells me they want to come down, they want to find a place, they want to do all kinds of things, the first thing I say is don't do it online. Come down, do it in person get here, get to know the country, because doing it online, doing it from remote, when you don't have the context, you don't know you don't know what the road is like to that particular town. You don't know what the distance is to this other thing. You don't know which city you want to be nearby. The list goes on and on. So you want to have that context. But we were in a good position to be able to do that. We made a lot of decisions and we were able to finally make the move in early 2021. We actually came down and did some investigating earlier in 2021. So we've actually been here at this point almost exactly three years. Uh, starting from then, plus the time we had before, we've been here for more than three years in total. Uh, we came down and did some investigating and we have a whole story of the properties that we looked at and what we decided to do during that time. We can talk about that another time. But by April, April, we had come down and we were living here in the area around Leon, Nicaragua. We first lived out at the beach and we thought that that was very likely where we wanted to be. We worked really hard and found a beach town that we absolutely loved and felt really good about being our future location. And we still do. We do not regret that location or that decision at all. But we originally thought we wanted to live directly on the beach. We gave that nearly a year, about nine months of living directly on the beach. And we discovered pretty quickly that being on the beach is a lot of overhead if you are not retired. If you're retired and you're just hoping people will stop by or you want to walk down to the local bar at all times day or night the beach can be absolutely wonderful. You may prefer it for exactly those reasons, but I still work from home. We do a lot of activities. We have the kids, we have the dogs. All those things made being on the beach extremely hard. It was a lot of overhead of there's just constantly people around and very little ability to get private time as a family. And that was difficult. And we ended up deciding to move into the barrios on the outskirts of the city between the beach and Leon proper. And that has ended up being an absolute perfect dream location for us. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said that we sold everything and moved to Nicaragua. That's not entirely true. So if we go back and look at what we did when we decided to move down in early 2021, because that's when we needed to do it. Well, the first thing we sold was our house. During the time from about 2019 to 2021, we managed to unload all of the properties that we owned in the United States. That gave us a lot of freedom. We weren't living in most of them for almost the entire time that we were there, but we were able to sell them and no longer have them as kind of a yoke holding us back. Having a property in the United States that you can't go check on easily is a major problem for anything, right? That could be anywhere, it just goes without saying. But we also needed to unload all of our furniture and other things, and that took a lot of work. And 
a lot while we tried to sell it, we ended up just giving away the, the majority of the things that we got rid of. It's actually quite hard to sell any number of possessions. Very few people, especially in the United States, want a bunch of used furniture and use this and use that random things that you're putting out. So we donated tons of goodwill. We put a lot out on the curb, which people take and recycle. They don't just throw it away normally. People, you put out a couch and someone actually does use it, but they're not going to buy it, right? They're just willing to take your free couch since you put it out. We ended up doing a lot of stuff that way. We got a storage unit in the United States and moved everything that remained, some of, it, some of which we thought we would want to keep, some of it we do still want to keep, and some things are just nostalgic mostly for our children. So we have a storage unit still after all this time, but not because we think it was a good idea at the time, not because I would recommend it to you, and not because we don't want to move what's in there down to here, simply because it's been three years and we've never had an opportunity to actually clear it out. We've been up there, my wife and I, a number of times and every time we open it up and find that it's so packed full of stuff that we can't really make inroads into it. We can't shuffle enough stuff around to find things that we could give away or sell or collect to put into our luggage, so it stays completely full. Now, you may make better packing decisions than us, so that may not be your problem, but it is certainly for us. We found that there's too much furniture still in there that we have to move it all out. We can't get to the small things we could put in our luggage. If we could get to everything we wanted, we could slowly empty it out, although it would probably take us decades and that's not very practical. So at this point, we're trying to figure out exactly how we're going to unload it. And chances are we're gonna fly, uh, my wife's probably gonna fly up, hire a crew, tear it all apart and give most of it away on the spot and find the minimum amount of stuff that we need to bring down here, put it in luggage and attempt to bring it all down. We've discovered that the idea that we want to keep things from the United States other than memories for our children and important like gifts from our wedding type things, we really don't want any of that stuff. All the things we thought we wanted to keep, we don't. It feels like, well, we own this thing. I've owned this thing for a long time. Why would I give it up now? But in reality, those things generally don't make sense. They weigh us down. It makes our life harder. It's more expensive. We have to pay every month to keep that up there. And if we brought it down here, are we going to put it somewhere? Where would we put it? A lot of that stuff has nowhere to go. We don't need anything else down here. Anything we needed, we bought down here right away. Anything else is just going to go into storage here. That's not great. There's a few things I'll admit that I wish I had from my storage unit. I have a couple things that are purely decorational. I have a collection of antique computers. Do I wish I could mount them on the wall and have them behind me when I'm doing videos? I do, that would be so cool. I would love to have that as part of my vlog. I do have a technology and business vlog separate from this one. For this show, that would be weird, right? I mean, it would be fine. You'd be like, neat, that's a Commodore 64. But on my tech show, people would be like, seriously, cool, dude, 64. Anyway, I digress. But some of that stuff I want, but the majority of it, no. I don't even remember what's up there. I have no idea why we have a 10 by 10 by 12 storage unit. That is so much space. Right, that is, that is crazy. That's 1,200 cubic feet of junk. I don't know what's in there. Yes, my guitar is in there. I would like that back. That would be cool. I have a bass guitar in there. My daughter wants that. Okay, that's cool. But there's a lot of things. There's shelving units. There's old computers. There's computer parts. There's cables. There's drawers. There's desks. There's, I don't have a clue what's up there anymore. Everything you, that you finally get to, you're like, I remember this thing. Do I need it? Of course not. When would I use any of it? It's been three years. I don't even remember what's there. So while we did pack up and move to Nicaragua, and that really did happen, and we've been here for three years, we didn't exactly sell everything. We sold quite a bit. We gave a lot away, but we still have a long way to go, and that's something that we do regret, and I advise people to get rid of a quite a bit more. Don't leave yourself with too much stuff that you can't handle uh, getting rid of once you're gone, because once you're gone, chances are you don't want to come back, at least not come back to clear out a storage unit or anything of the sort. But everyone's story is going to be a little bit different, but ours was pretty adventurous. So now that we've been here, this is probably what you really want to know. What has life been like and how have things been over the last three years of moving my wife and I and our kids? We have two children who are currently 12 and 15. We have two dogs who are running around in the yard behind me. And now we have a cat and a parrot who you hear quite a bit on the show, all living here in Nicaragua with us. For us, we can honestly say after three years here in Nicaragua, it has been an amazing adventure. Living in Nicaragua has been incredibly interesting and valuable for us as a family. It has given us a lot more time together as a family. It has 
made for a community where we feel we have a lot more friends than we ever did living in the United States, way, a little bit more than we had in Texas, way more than we ever had living in New York. We lived uh, in the Hudson Valley, just north of New York City. We had friends there, we had good lives there, but the life here just seems so much better. We have easy access to the beach and it's affordable. We can go anytime that we want. We also have easy access to downtown in the city and it's accessible. We can go anytime we want. Going out to eat is easy. We do miss the variety of food from back home. That is certainly something we wish we had. But in general, we really enjoy our lives here. And while it's really warm, a lot of people complain about the incredible level of heat. It's often in the 90s. It's almost always at least in the 80s. But we get used to that. And we actually noted just last night at dinner in the middle of the city at a restaurant that we remember very clearly when we first lived on the beach and we would come into Leon and go to dinner. We would sit at this restaurant and we would just be drenched in sweat. It was so hot. And now, just two years later from that story, we go out to the same place and my wife comments that I, who sweat very easily, didn't sweat at all. We were sitting in the restaurant. We did not have a fan on us. There's certainly no air conditioning. We're sitting outside. And she noted that when she saw foreigners come in that they were looking sweaty. And then she looked at us and realized that we didn't. And it made, it really highlighted just how much we have acclimated in the years that we've been here. And we acclimated long before now. Now it's been long enough that we generally don't think about it. But it's a really important point that when we first got here, it felt really warm. And of course, we moved down in the early spring. So the difference from where we were coming from was pretty large. We had just gone through blizzards, literally covered in snow, weeks without power. And we moved down here and suddenly it was 90 degrees. So the difference was staggering. That sudden jarring change of temperature means your body is going to feel it. But now that we've lived here for a while, those hot days, we barely notice. And if you watch my show, just the other day, I did a show at 96, 97 degrees in bright sunlight. And with a little breeze, I was super comfortable and didn't even really start sweating at all. That's a big difference to where we were a number of years ago. So that kind of stuff you do acclimate to. So we got through that and now we find a lot of the things that originally seemed exotic, that originally seemed crazy, that really worried us or, or felt really like barriers to being part of this place here in Nicaragua now feel completely natural and we don't think about at all. So many things just are easy. And when people talk about, you know, doing the same tasks and all the things you have to do, errands or whatever that you do in the United States or do here, now that we're used to it, pretty much everything here is just easier. But we're about the same. It's not that it's so dramatically easier, but it is Everything is closer. It's just easier to drive. It's easier to park. It's easier to you get used to it. And suddenly it's it's really not a very hard place. It's been a great experience for us. We have loved our time here culturally and as a family. Uh, our, our, I'm able to work from home. That has been a vast improvement over being in the States. I have more space. It's easier to find working environments. Just every little thing seems easier. When it's all put together, it has been a really good life here. And of course, a big advantage of moving to any new place is that life is kind of an adventure. I always hated staying wherever I was. I just don't like staying put in general. I like having challenges. I like being forced to learn a new language, learn a, my way around a new city, explore new neighborhoods or whatever uh, in every aspect of life. I do this with work all the time. We're constantly taking on new projects, trying to do more challenging things. Well, in my personal life, I try to do the same thing. I want to play hard video games. I want to have cool projects. I want to have every little experience in life be something that pushes me forward to grow, to discover the world, to keep interest. The world is just an interesting place and living abroad has done a lot to make life just that much more fun and exciting and interesting and challenging every day, but in really positive ways. And Nicaragua has just been fantastic for us. We're really glad that this is a place that we chose for our family, for our kids. And when we first moved here, I say this all the time, my kids were sure they wanted to move back to Texas when they were older. They were great. They were perfectly happy. They remembered Nicaragua. They're like, yeah, we'd love to go back to Nicaragua. I don't think we're going to stay there forever, but we're glad to go back. We think that'll be a great place to grow up. But now that they've been here, they're very much of, this is fantastic. Why would I want to go back? They still want to see the world. They still want to explore other places. They still plan on living abroad at different times, but they don't plan on returning home. They're planning on this being their home base as they get older as well. That's really telling for me. But we also 
really have changed gears, and we no longer are significantly looking around the world for a place that we want to move to for our forever home. We came to Nicaragua thinking that it was going to be a decent option, and certainly something we could live with if this is where we got stuck, but it was really more of a this is the best thing we can come up for for now, and at some point we'll probably find the place we want to move to for forever. But the reality is, is now that we've been here, this has become our home. It really feels like home. It feels like we belong. We have lots of friends here. Everything we do is so social and we're becoming more and more part of the culture and we're becoming more and more steeped and integrated and comfortable. And while we still love to travel and we want to see the world and we certainly are going to evaluate lots of places, we have really shifted, just like my kids did, from seeing Nicaragua as a temporary, even if really long-term, uh, investment in having a better launching point to being our assumed forever home. This is where we already own a house. This is where we plan to build our custom house. This is where we are investing our time and energy and emotions into this being home. This is the place that we see that way. And it took a little while. For the first year, you would have been really struggling to get me to say that this is definitely where we want to be long-term. We thought this is where we wanted to be in Nicaragua long-term, but that Nicaragua was our really definitive permanent option seemed at best 50-50. But now that we've been here three years, I would say it's much more like 90% chance this is where we want to be. We're extremely happy with the choice to come here. We're extremely happy with being here. I've been vlogging nearly every day since we got here. You can follow our journey on the show and you can see as we learn things, as we discover new things, as things happen to us, not everything's on the vlog. And some days have been missed in the early days. Now it's been way over two years since we missed a day. But uh, it's it's been... A journey. It has been a discovery. It's been an adventure and it remains an adventure. That's part of what makes it great is that it keeps being an adventure, but one that we keep feeling more and more a part of rather than observers of. This has been really great. So yes, we sold everything three years ago, packed up in Texas and moved to Nicaragua. It's been really interesting and it's been really good. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for taking a moment to hear about our story. This is my channel where I talk about everything about Nicaragua from our journey here to how you can do different things in the country where it makes sense for you and so forth but a lot of people haven't heard our story and how we ended up here so I wanted to share that especially as vidIQ told me this is something that we should do a topic on so I was like well actually I need a topic for the day and that is something I know so and I we haven't really done in this way so I wanted to share that with you thanks for joining me for my personal adventures thank you for joining us on the channel if you'd like to support the channel you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe, let someone know, whether in person or post on social media, on a website, put that link up there, let people know about the show. Every time you do that, Google knows that this is something that's important to you. And of course, scroll down, get down in those comments, leave me a comment, just say, you know, you like the show, you didn't like the show, you like the location, the dogs are cute, whatever. Or especially if you have any questions, Nicaragua, Latin America, relocation, retiring abroad, any of those kinds of things, like all the stuff we cover here, please ask your questions. That's how we get uh, content topics for the show. That's where we draw most everything from. So I really appreciate when people are asking poignant questions. It gives me an opportunity to focus on something important that matters for you, right? That way it's not just, well, I think people like this. I know you want to know about it. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.